more internship opportunities are needed for young people who are at home needing jobs this year. Many companies uh, have been under distress since the national lockdown and some had to retrench workers and shut their doors and this could potentially deny many young people job opportunities, especially those unemployed graduates who are hoping to enter the job market. So uh, let's get to hear more uh, from uh, Tamsan Mamakubela, who is uh, the CEO of the Employment Graduates Association of South Africa. Thank you very much uh, for coming through, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Lamane, and uh, good day to you and the SABC listeners. Compliments of the new year. Uh, how, how are things looking for internship opportunities this year, given that we know that there are companies that really struggle to make a comeback, and uh, those who are still trying to survive and remain afloat perhaps could consider uh, these internships? Thank you for the opportunity. Remember, we've got three sides when it comes to intensity programs. We have the funding side, which comes from the CITES. We are grateful that we have the metro CITA, the MICT CITA, the construction CITA, as well as the energy and water CITA, who have made funds available to the South African Council for Graduates as we speak to be able to place these graduates. The other side then depends on the side of the learners, the graduates, and the students who require workplace training to become competent and to have work experience. They are readily available. Many of them have been calling our offices, sending emails and WhatsApp, inquiring, when are we starting? So it is indeed the challenge that we need to deal with and be able, and as we are in this interview today, to see how we can then deal with the third leg of an internship program to make it effective and successful. The third leg then is the leg of the employers. As we speak right now, we have over 160 employers that are in the program as funded by the CITAS that I've mentioned. However, for 2021, we need just about 250 employers to take the learners. And of course, it's been very difficult. Last week, we received an email from one of the employers that uh, 22 learners would have to be staying at home because of the increasing numbers of COVID-19 and the risk that is attached to having many employees, particularly graduates that are in the workplace training in the workplace. So the numbers from companies who are saying, please stay home a bit so that we can be able to see how best to react and respond to the growing challenge of COVID-19 in 2021, it seems to be increasing and we need to find a way and solutions to this serious challenge. So, so what's going to happen with uh, the intake of 2020, which could have been interrupted by the hard lockdown and how does the element of continuity uh, take over in as far as new intakes are concerned? Certainly, what we have heard is that the 2020 uh, program started quite late. Uh, the program started, was supposed to start in February. It ended up starting up in May. And now the learners who started in 2020, they need to continue up until around April, May 2021. But of course, with the delays that we are facing now, it is going to be a bit of a challenge. But what gives me joy is that employers are saying we are not permanently removing or banning the young people or graduates from coming to the workplace. We are taking stock of the situation. We are taking stock of the gravity of, of the infections that have been rising countrywide so that then we are better prepared. So we are hoping that uh, by the end of this week or probably next week, most of the employers will come back and notify us as to how many can come back. What we did last year is that some employers were able to give us an opportunity to bring learners back in batches. So we are hoping we'll be able to do the same in 2021 and bring these learners in batches as early as we are in January right now. As for the 2021 graduates, definitely we will have to find another way, an alternative if the employers that we have, who have signed and committed to work with the South African Council for Graduates are not able to take the learners because of course, when there are no employees, when there are no supervisors, you cannot have an internship program. So we are hoping that we can find alternative employers. So we are making a call right now to say all the employers who have a need to take graduates 
that are funded with an internship from the South African graduates, South African Council for Graduates, funded by a number of sitters in the engineering sector, in the IT sector, in the energy and water sector, and the construction sector, come to us so that we can be able to assist you while you are helping our youth to become employable and we have work experience. All right, so when it comes to the cooperative side, how are you coping regarding these uh, lockdown regulations when there has to be training and development during the internship programs? And let's say after a period of two years, the young people now having to engage in uh, business management and entrepreneurship, then how are you enabling them to move on with their lives when their contracts have expired? We have a number of programs that we are putting in place. And of course, uh, the lockdown is not assisting, but we've got to be innovative, we've got to be creative to find solutions to work together with the government to bring about plausible solutions that will ensure that we survive this lockdown that we have. So what we have now, we've put what we call the Care Readiness Program, which is a podcast session. That is a virtual session sent to learners via WhatsApp so they can be able to listen to and get the assistance and the feedback. However, we are also going to commence with Saturday programs that are going to be virtual, where we'll then be able to get these young people to connect 